Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing? Hey, Shamika, Christina, Miss Delta. Hi, Angela. Love, loving your background. That's where I want to be. Hi, Amira. Hey, Miss Arlene. Arthetis, Mr. Burke, how you doing? Who's that on the iPhone? Hey, Lynette, we need to rename you. You could just type in the chat. Who's on the iPhone? So we can get you renamed. We got some other people joining us. If you are watching us from Team Lux Platinum, hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. I wonder, Stephanie, is that you on the iPhone? Great afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? Great afternoon, great afternoon. So, anything we can celebrate? Has anybody done anything that we could celebrate? What have you done to move your business forward? I just got my first business partner, so I'm wait, a month wait, in. And wait, let me hold up. Yes, <laughs> Lynette, I love it. Tell us about your new business partner. How did you come up across this person, and what process did you take them through to get them on board? Well, so I, you know, started utilizing my Facebook contacts and reaching out to warm prospects, of course, and. Once she said she was extremely interested, I then did my first PS3. Um, and then she told us that she would be ready at the beginning of the month. And uh, she came on yesterday. And so I'm truly excited to have her aboard. Um, so just trying to build that business and learn and earn. I love it. I love it. Don't say try. Ah, you got it. I take that back. <laughs> I remove it from the atmosphere. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations, Lynette. Now the most important thing is getting them onboarded properly, making sure they have that welcome call and getting them plugged in. It's like you got them in, now you just got to drop them into the planet marketing soup, right? The culture um, and make sure because if they don't plug in, it's not good. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before they fall off. So congratulations. I'm super, super proud of you. Shamika? Well, I finished Disney, so I am a Disney specialist. Yes, that is awesome. <laughs> that that certification is a beast, but isn't it worth it? It is. And you know what? I shouldn't have listened to everybody. Y'all was just hyping it up because it was not that bad. Honestly, it's Virgin not hard. Voyages, it's just long. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think Virgin Voyage is as long, but. And another thing, my friend booked my birthday trip, so I'll be in Miami for my birthday. Nice. Um, this year for the first time, me and my best friend, so I'm excited about that. Um, so Where yeah, that's are you staying in doing. Miami? At the Soleil Miami Noble um, Resort, Resort okay. from Collins. And what would you say was your biggest takeaway from the Disney certification? And why would you recommend it um, to everyone? My biggest takeaway is um, you think it's for the kids mainly, but no, it's <laughs> they have so much adult entertainment bars. I mean, it's a lot for the adults and I never really thought about that. So that was my biggest takeaway. And I'm like, OK, now now I need to put an adult Disney trip um, together. So I'm working on that as well. But that's my biggest takeaway It's it's for the adults just as well as it's for the kids so they got something for everybody now let me ask you this you're also building the business the disney certificate certification takes a while how did you manage your time how how are you able to still work the marketing side of your business and make time to get the certification because I know you get a lot of certifications. I see you sharing it. So how do you manage your time to be able to get all of that done? I schedule it on my calendar. <laughs> I schedule it on my calendar and most times I'm doing it like late at night. So this one here is sleep mm -hmm. and I can focus on it because 
I like to when I once I start the certification, I like to get it done like as soon as possible because I know once I start doing something else, it's not gonna happen. So I'm doing it like late at night or I'm scheduling it on my um calendar. So excellent. that's how I do it. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for sharing. Miss Amira. So Shamika just finished hers, but I just started mine. So I did I did I did my first uh college of Disney knowledge. I got my first certificate yesterday. So I'm excited and I have everything on my because you know what I've been dealing with with my memory and stuff. My planner is stacked from hour to hour, uh time frame to time frame. So I'm really just utilizing my planner even more and more now. It's and I have alarms set on my phone uh, so that I, I don't let myself get interrupted and I have to like read. It really tries to, it, I'm really, bleh, don't say that word. <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> my goal is really just to stay focused one at a time mm -hmm. and not allow myself to get distracted by anything. I resist the urge to pick up my phone and check what's, no, I have certain times designated to hit my social media. So I'm really working on getting that uh keeping that stable i love that i love that i love that all right time management miss bethany um i also got a brand new business partner the last couple of days wait 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 <laughs> yes for the brand new business partner <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. congratulations tell us how did you come across mm -hmm. this person take us through the process how'd you get take us from the p to the s to the three so an interesting thing is um, I met his wife on some group on Facebook some months ago. And I reached out to her at that point. She was interested in that. I saw it because they traveled everywhere. They just came back from Italy for a month. They went to Barbados for a week and a half. She did a girl's trip well, but all in between all of that. And so <clears throat> early in the year, I reached out to her. She wasn't interested at all. So I just kind of kept her in a loop of things and just, you know, just every now and then just kind of touch her and, um, and uh, messenger and just remind her or just and keep her engaged. And I think it was about twice I reached out to her and was like, you, you should really do the business. And she kept saying no. And then the third time I reached out to her, she was like, you know what, I got to do it. But that's why she was going to Italy. So she said, I'm going to get back. Uh, we'll be in touch. She reached out to me that that when she got back and she was ready to go to a girl's weekend. So didn't connect them. I said, fine, we'll have a PBR. I had her send the video to her as well. <clears throat> Let me tell her this stuff. <clears throat> I said, we'll have a PBR um, next week. And she said, fine, I'll join on, I'll, I'll uh, log on to that. When she got back from her girl's trip, she didn't realize that that same week she was going to Barbados. She thought she had an extra week. So she couldn't do the PBR that week. But she, when she came on, when she came back in town, she, her and her husband were on. Well, actually, he was on. She was in the background somewhere. I didn't even see her at all. And so he was on. He was interested. He was he was engaged. She didn't ask any questions. But he definitely was like, um, by the time it was over, she had reached back out to me and said, he's interested. He wants to do it. I said, okay, fine. She said, um, send him a friend, a, a friend request. I did that. So he and I connected the same night. He was like, uh, very, all cats, very interested. What's the next step? So we had just got done with our with our PBR. I mean, like a half hour earlier. He's in Nebraska or Kansas or somewhere like that. So I said, if you can jump back on like 15 minutes, we, we can get you started. So he did, we did, and here we are. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations, yeah. Bethany. Thank you. Thank you. So it just goes to show it goes to show that you just gotta still be consistent with people. The fortune and, is in the follow-up. Um, yeah, and you never know who's still watching you because people because she evidently was. And um, so yeah, just be consistent with it and follow up. Yep. Listen, everybody is watching you. It's not even a matter, you never know who. Everybody is watching you. And so the question is, what are you showing them? Are you showing them that you're still active in the business, that you take your business seriously and that you treat it like a business and not like a hobby? Are you showing them that you are engaged in your business, participating, going to your weekly meetings, going to the events, never, never missing an event you're qualified to attend? Are you showing them that you're booking travel that you're working the IntelliTravel side of the business, that you're booking for clients? Are you showing them that you're getting your education on the travel side of the business? Are you showing them that you're studying? Are you showing them that you help your people? 
It's like, what are you showing the people that are watching you? Because I promise you, they're watching. Miss Norma, and welcome back from your, was it a MSC cruise? And I love your hair, by the way. Thank you. Uh, it was a Royal Caribbean cruise. Right, tell us about the cruise first before you tell us whatever you're about to say. We want to hear about this cruise. <laughs> it was fantastic. I met um family that I've never met before and they li literally just live a block from me wow. <laughs> for 13 years wow. so that was awesome it was very emotional but it was really quite nice the food was lovely the island was lovely the people were on there there was so much excursion and, and activities it was like it blew my mind that there was so much stuff to do and I couldn't do half of them nor even three quarter of them <laughs> it was just so much to do there was so much um live activities as well. There were regular things that you could res reserve. The food was amazing. Different, you have so many different restaurants to try. Try. There was a lot on there. Which ship did you go on? Royal Caribbean, the Oasis of the Sea. Oasis of the Sea. And that's Oasis. humongous. You could be walking forever. Okay. <laughs> and so, what islands did you go to? What port of calls did you go to? We just went to their private island, um, Coco, oh, okay. okay? Yes, but we how did was go it? to the Bahamas. We did stop into the Bahamas. I literally um, connected with five people in Bahamas. So I have five numbers that I, <laughs> that she I was, was doing. She was prospecting. Y'all catch oh, that? I was. <laughs> Norma was working her business while on her cruise. I was. Right? That's mm -hmm. how you get market shares in the Bahamas. And then you have a reason to cruise back over there to help yeah. you. Yeah. The arson carriage guy, I, I, I'm supposed to be talking to him. I went into a place known as Crocs to buy some or something, and I interviewed the lady, put her up on Facebook, and I did a live with her. I have her number. <laughs> so I told them that I would be talking to them um, yesterday, but yesterday I slept because mm -hmm. we didn't come back in until after 2 in the morning. Uh, we were supposed to leave at 6 p.m. at the airport, but we never left until, like, almost 10 o'clock. It was awful, but anyways, that's that. But yes, I was building my business while I'm there. It wasn't just about going there. It was literally to, I learn, I take a few pointers from my coach before I left. So I know exactly what to do when I get there. I was talking to everybody that I came in contact with that I could literally have a conversation with. So I gave out my numbers, my cards, and I get some numbers in return. Even in Atlanta, when we went for the eighth year anniversary, I got all of those Uber guys. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and there was this gentleman just talking to us randomly at the airport when we we're heading back and I have his number he's a person that does help out with all the hotels mm -hmm. so he's been doing that for 30 years so I'll be talking to him as well it was just awesome um, that in Miami I got a chance to stay three nights in Miami just to do just to be with the families that we went to to get to so, and I did get some family members that I will be talking to as well. Excellent. So I hope this week will be a great week for me. Well, I'm not hoping. It will be. You better put that be. thing out there. <laughs> Throw that yeah. in the atmosphere. It will be. We we create our own destiny. Right. We're going to have an yeah. amazing week. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, Director Short. I love when my leadership gets on here. How you doing? It's so good to see you. Good to see you. I love it. I love it. Anybody else do anything to move your business forward? Because we got to celebrate all the milestones, right? We got to take those long goals, those big goals, and break them down to smaller goals. And we definitely want to celebrate along the way. I got a question for everybody. Who has their 2024 calendar? Doo -doo. Just type me in the chat if you have it. 2024 calendar. Okay, Director Short, I love it. Zara, good job, good job. Shamika said it's on her on its way. She ordered it. Angela has her Bonita. Wah, wah, wah. Benita, come off mute. 
ma'am. Hello, beautiful. Hi, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. So tell me why you haven't gotten your 2024 calendar yet. Um, You're not planning for your future like the rest of us? Yes, I am. That's why today um, I made I made appointment. Well, yesterday, day before yesterday, I made appointment with my director to um, talk to her to get me to help me get back on track because my um, in our meeting, the group meeting on Monday, um, one of the directors, um, three star director, was talking about how important the daily method operation is to schedule, not on the thing. So I slipped back because I was so used to iPhone, everything schedule and everything. So I, I told her last night that I thank her for pushing the e effort of putting that out there because I went back into my iPhone, not realizing that I wasn't doing everything that I was in, what I used to do on my scheduler um, thing. So I'm still trying to, not try, I'm, in the process of stop putting everything on my iPhone. And if I do still put it in my um, scheduler, um, but it was so easy because like when you're on Facebook and you see a group in a meeting, what do we do? We save it, put it on our calendar. So I went back into that mode, which um, today when we talked to, when I talked to my director and we, you know, try to get myself back on track. Um, see where I fell at and how how can I do better on it? But I know I did better when I was scheduling. But then I went away and don't know what I did with my schedule. So I hope I didn't leave it at my mom. Uh -oh. So so I'm like, but I will be putting the order today after we while we talking. I'm gonna go online on Amazon and schedule my thing because I have to learn. Everybody, I'm always there for everybody, and I just realized I need to do me. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes tragedy hit, but they have to deal with their self because y'all not putting food on my table. Right. And, you know, and I had to think of, even though, yes, something's going on right now, but I had to just push that on the side because uh, when I hear y'all testimony and what y'all went through and y'all still shook it off, if y'all bury someone, y'all still did what y'all had to do. If y'all something tried to have, y'all still did what y'all had to do. Y'all sleep in the car. Y'all still had to do what y'all had to do to get to where y'all at. So, Y'all prime example, y'all the testimony. Mm -hmm. So if it's not really, if I can't help, no, I have to do me. Cause I want to get my husband, I want to retire him mm -hmm. so we can live our best life because we're not getting no younger. Right. And that's why I, I had to think and I had to tell that to somebody yesterday and this morning. I'm like, I'm sorry. Even with my kids, when I when I do get up there, y'all better jump on the band ride because y'all ain't gonna see him be borrowing money me from me while y'all could be doing the same thing I did. And y'all younger than me. Right. Right. I love it. I love so it. So I'm putting my order in today. <laughs> Good job, Benita. But Good I'm still job. learning. So, you know, I'm was so not used to I'm I'm a retiree over 25 years. So it's just like I'm still learning how to do a lot of things. So I I give y'all so much prop in everything. And when I tell you sometimes, Miss Bird, I fall asleep watching you when I wake up and you on the TV. That's <laughs> <laughs> to be the other day. Are you sleep? I said, why? He said, because even when you fall asleep downstairs, you got somebody on the TV. And I'm like, yeah, Director Bird. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I like it. your stern. I like how you and another director, I just like, you know, sometimes. You might think you're talking harsh to us, or if you do, that's you. But we we need that because some of us, how can we say, we came out of being an employee, not an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So for you to talk like that, some of us need that. Mm -hmm. So, and then I love because you record. So, I mean, I just re repeat, repeat because of my head injury. I sometimes can't catch it right, right then and there. So yeah. I just thank you for who you are. Oh, and don't change, you. don't change for nobody. I won't. Thank you, Anita, for that. Thank you. And let me say this. I used to be guilty, too, of putting everything on my phone, and I still do. However, I noticed that even though I was allowing the appointments on my phone to dictate my activity, right, to make sure that I was staying on track, when I stopped using the paper calendar, my productivity went down. 
because when you have your planner, especially the month at a glance, and I put all the major things, not the, not necessarily, I'm talking about the month at a glance, not the daily, right? The month at a glance. This is really showing me what my activity looks like for the month. So what types of things am I tracking on my month at a glance? Number one, my numbers. My numbers, right? My next promotion is four star. So every morning I write down my four star number and my overall team number. Where am I at? I don't care if you are a team of zero right now. Put your one star number zero and put your overall team number. It might be two, it might be three, it might be one. But you should track that every single day so that you can see, because here's the thing, you're gonna get tired of putting zero. And you're gonna be looking forward to putting that next increment, that next number, right? Not only that, anybody here ever had your leader ask you, what's your date to hit your next promotion? Right? What is your date to hit your next promotion? And you feel compelled to give a date, even though you might not know what that date is. You're like, I better say something. I ain't gonna tell my, I better not say I don't know. <laughs> Right? However, your next promotion date should be a SMART goal. It has to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So if you're not tracking your numbers daily, how can you legitimately give a date for your next promotion? You can't. You just don't want a number out there because it sounds good. Right, so I want you to imagine starting today, you track your numbers on your month at a glance portion of your weekly planner. And then come January, now you have two months of stats. And now you're gonna really be in a position to determine when your next promotion is because you'll be able to see, oh, for the month of November, I enrolled X amount of people and my team grew by X amount. Oh, for the month of December, I enrolled X amount of people, my team grew by X amount. And so now you can legitimately say, at the rate I'm going, I should be able to hit my next promotion by and now you got a legitimate date, a real goal, a smart goal, and not just a random number you picked up, right? Does that make sense? Amira, you have your hand up? So I that's interesting because when um, Mr. Director Burke sent out the request for smart goals, it took me a couple days because I couldn't figure out what I didn't know how I was going to feel and all that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to manage, um, working on managing my productivity, right, with the planner and all that stuff. But even with with reading the book, it, he everybody he talks about is are people with stats or people with documented stats. And, you know, he goes by those numbers based on their six. OK, well, you don't feel you're productive in this area. Let's go ahead and get this. And there's numbers and there's dates and there's. So that's that's really helpful. So even with my even with me still chasing what I want at my next level, like I really that I'm that's really going to be useful for me. I did write up my smart goals and send them. So that's step one. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, like I'm definitely going to impart that into my um into my planner and my documentation. That's really good. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. You have to track your numbers. Think about at your job. Did you not have numbers and metrics you had to meet at your job? If you were on customer service answering phones, you had an ACW, you had a wait time right in between calls that couldn't be over a certain amount. You had a certain amount of calls you had to take in or make during a day. 
Why do they have those numbers? Because they're doing business. They got to be able to track the productivity. And so if we're supposed to be treating our business like a business, how do we not track our numbers? Like, what are we doing? It's a, If you're not tracking your numbers, you're treating your business like a hobby. Right? Because there's no accountability. There's nothing to see. Oh, am I really working my business? What? You got to track your numbers. Treat your business the same way they were running uh, the corporation that you used to work at or still work at. And here's the other thing. Whatever your date is, never change it. You never change your goal date. How many of you said you were going to hit your next promotion by convention that just passed. Honestly. Okay. Keep that date. Because now your goal is to hit the promotion sooner than later. So you don't say, you know, Oh, I hit my promotion. We don't want to say six months after my goal date. It sounds better to say three months after my goal date. Right? Or two months after my goal date. Or 30 days after my goal date. So it's going to cause you to increase your activity. If you don't change the date, you're going to increase your activity because you don't want that number of how far past your original date Right? You don't want that number to be a huge number. So you got to increase your activity because the only reason you didn't hit the goal is because you were not, your activity wasn't high enough to hit it. But what ends up happening is if you change the date and say, oh, I didn't hit it by convention. So I'm going to make sure I get it done by the end of the year. Guess what that does to your productivity? Slow it down. Because now you're like, shh. I got four months. I got four months to get it done. And so you 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 slack. You don't increase your productivity because you you move the goalpost. We never move the goalpost. You got to increase your activity. So even when how many of you are going to make a vision board for 2024? When you make your vision board for 2024, whatever goals you didn't hit in 2023, you move them over to your 2024 with the old goal date. Because it gotta be in your face that you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. If not, you just you just get lackadaisical with it. Amira? No, I, I, I see you had it. Looks I, just like got got excited. I just got excited because this is so good. Like you, you're like right on, you're always right on time. Like it's really like divine. Like it doesn't make no sense how this works. And it's just like, you always hit it right on time with exactly what we need for the moment. And this is so good. I'm excited because now I'm looking at my list of smart goals and literally I have my planner out and I'm just like, I'm looking at you, I'm listening to you and I'm sitting there like, don't push the goalpost. Like literally just like everything you're saying just makes perfect sense. So I'm, I'm literally looking at it right now, writing down my smart goal in my planner now. Cause it wasn't, it was sitting on an envelope cause I had to make sure I give it to doctor, to director Burke before he, you know, blasts me or something like that and gets on me. Like, I don't want no trouble with the Burks. I don't want no drama <laughs> with the Burks. Cause, <laughs> cause now both of y'all is on me and I'm just like, <clears throat> I don't want this smoke. Y'all know that you, you'll obviously see something in me. So Absolutely. I need to show up. I so, see you director know, by next convention. That's what I see. This is it. This is it. So everything that you're giving me is just tips and on how to really take control over what I got going on. And it's literally just like, even if you just, you said it's going to be right in your face. I'm about to put it like on my wall now. It's like, like this is, it's necessary. So this is just dope. I'm excited. Excellent. Got me excited. Excellent. Lynette? 
Um, I guess I share the same sentiments, right? Because this is my first time coming on and I I always have a calendar because I just stay busy in other areas. So the vision board, I started one, but now I have the opportunity to finish one or continue to edit one and put it in my face and then never change the goal date. I really like that, but I will say I do struggle with the SMART goals, you know, how to actually make them specific, attainable, but I'm going to work on that too. So I'm glad that I'm not here by coincidence. Exactly. Now, Lynette, how long have you been in the business and who's your upline director? Um, so Shelly Mercer, and Hello. it's a little over a month. Excellent. Well, welcome to the family. Um, and you. I do this virtual coffee break on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. So Thank it's you. always streamed in our Team Lux Platinum group, and it's also uploaded to my YouTube channel. Um, and we're going to talk about the SMART goals since you brought that up, because I want to be able to help you with that. Uh, Amira? I do have a question though. So when we do re and you probably are going to address this now that you've thought about it. Um, if when we do reach our smart goal, like earlier than what we intended, what do you recommend our next step is? Do you want us to bump up our next goal by that many days? Or like, how do you want us to manage that next level? Well, you always have to reassess your goals and you should okay. have multiple goals, right? Right. You have two businesses. Right. So you should have some smart goals for your IntelliTravel business and you should have some smart goals for your planet marketing business. Once you hit your promotion, clap, clap, next level. Right. Right. Once you hit one star, guess what? You got to hit two star. Right. Once you hit bronze, we got to go to silver. Once you hit silver, we got to get to gold. Once you hit gold, 2020. Once you hit 2020, director in training, team of 50. Right. Bronze silver, gold, one star, two star, three star ring. That's the game. Right, so what do you want us, so like, do you want us to bump up our goal though? Like if we- Give me if, an example for, of what you're saying. For instance, if I have a promotion date for bronze for 12-1, mm -hmm. to make sure no matter what, 12-1 by 12-1, I'm where I wanna be. Mm -hmm. And but also, instead of by the following month, I hit silver by 12.15, then that leaves another month that I had available for gold. So with respect to that, like, do you, should we bump that up in the schedule? Or you be like, oh, we got some time to, no, there's no slowing down. We're always pushing the gas. So I kind of answer my own question. There you go. And wouldn't it be nice to say, ah, I hit gold two months ahead of schedule. Yay me. I'm going after 2020 now. Mm -hmm. We don't change the dates. We don't change the dates. And so let's talk about the SMART goals. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, Timely. Let's talk about number one, Specific. Number one, specific, clearly define your goal. Make it specific and well-defined. For example, instead of setting a vague goal like increased travel sales, specify it as increased monthly travel sales by 20%. Okay? Specific. Same thing like with the marketing side. It's not, oh, I want to hit director by such and such. You know, you could say I want to grow my team by, you know, five people monthly. Right? Number two, measurable. Establish criteria to measure your progress and determine when you've achieved your goal. Identify specific metrics or key performance indicators that can be quantified. For instance, you could measure the number of new customers acquired, the total sales volume, or the growth of your downline, right? We're going to say the growth of the downline, all right? 
So it has to be measurable. This is why I said you got to track your numbers. Because how are you going to, yes, we can all go in our back office and, you know, look at the report and see how much our team has grown. But if you have it on your month at a glance, you can every day just glance at it and say, oh, my team grew by, right? And so at the end of every month, you're tracking it daily. But at the end of the month, now you can kind of summarize and say, I enrolled X amount of people this month and my team grew by X, right? So it's measurable. Number three, achievable. Ensure that your goal is realistic and attainable. Consider the resources, skills, and time you have available. Setting goals that are too far-fetched or unrealistic can be demotivating. I like to call that self-sabotage. When you're like, ah, I'm going to hit the rector by the end of the, at end of the year, and you haven't enrolled anybody in four months. <laughs> really? How's that going to happen? Right? So you commit self-sabotage when you make your goals unrealistic because then when you don't hit it, now you, you're all depressed. Now you're not motivated. Aim for a challenge, but achievable objective that pushes you beyond your comfort zone. That right there is the key. So for example, Amira, right now, how many active people do you have on your team? Two. And what's your goal date to hit bronze? I don't know why I keep meeting myself. You're talking to me. Um, The 1st of December, by the 1st of December. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. November 30th. Okay. So end of the month. You only need one more person. So here's my point. Here's my point. Here's my point to what I'm what I'm talking about right now. Your goal should be realistic, but it should also challenge you to give yourself a whole two months to enroll one person when it's only November seventh. What about two months for two people? I mean, what about the end of the year for two people? I said, I said at a minimum, at, at, as a brand new business partner that's, um, you know, still getting their feet wet, learning it, you should be able to enroll one person a month. I mean, seriously. Okay. Said, that, that, you got to have, here, here's the thing. If you don't have a DMO, a daily method of operation, with a certain amount of people that you're going to prospect a week, then yeah, you, you, you're not going to hit your goal. Then I can see why you would say December 31st. But let's say, for example. Director Burke, I said the, I said December 1st, not January 1st. I said December, that's just this, this, this the day after. I still say November 30th. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> now, let me show you why. Let me show you why I'm saying November 30th. Everybody should have a DMO, a daily method of operation, right? Everybody should have a weekly goal of how many people they're going to prospect a week. That makes so sense. You're working this business part time. I would say at a minimum, you should be able to prospect 35 people a week. If we break that down, that's five people a day. Is five people a day, is that not realistic? It is. Right? If I wanted to prospect Arlene, all right, I, I pick her up. Hey, Arlene, how you doing? I know we haven't spoken in a while, but listen, I just wanted to reach out to you real quick. I don't know if you're aware, but I recently started a new business project. I'm super excited about it. I needed to make some extra money. I'm having a business launch on such and such a day. And I thought of you because... I figured you could use some extra money and, you know, to be able to do a little extra for those grandkids this Christmas. Can I count on you to be there? Right? 
or hey Shamika, how you doing? Listen, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to reach out to you real quick. I recently started a new business project and to make some extra money. And I thought of you because I know that you're a single mom and figured you could use some extra income from home. Is this something you'd be open to taking a look at? Hey Delta, how you doing? Listen, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to reach out to you real quick. I recently started a new business project because I needed some extra money and I wanted to, you know, not be working for corporate America for the next 20 years. And I thought of you because I know that you're retired and I figured you could use some extra income to supplement your retirement. Is this something you'd be open to taking a look at? Hey, Lakeisha, how you doing? Listen, I know we haven't spoken in a while. I hope you and the family are doing well. Listen, I just wanted to reach out to you real quick. I started a new business project. I'm super excited about it. And I I thought of you because I know that you want to retire within the next three to five years. Are you open to looking at additional streams of income outside of what you're currently doing? Y'all see my point? Yeah. Did I not just peak four people in less than five minutes? I mean, it's a peaking is a question. It's not a conversation. Hey, Shanae, how you doing? Listen, I know you love to travel. Girl, I saw you just got back from Jamaica. By the way, I loved your bathing suit. Super cute. Listen, if I could show you a way to do more of what you love and earn income, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? Ta-da! So 35 a week is not unrealistic. That's 70 people over two weeks. That's 140 people a month. So you trying to tell me, Amira, if you're peaking 140 people a month, one of them ain't going to sign up by the end of the month? This is why we say you got to go through the numbers. We don't treat people like numbers, but you got to go through the numbers. Yeah, that's good. You got me. You got me. Here you go. So imagine if you're doing that, you should be able to say, I'm going to hit bronze in November. <laughs> right? I'm going to hit silver in December. I'll be gold in January. Now you can project because you have these numbers. Imagine if starting today, for all of you who this is new and you commit, I'm peaking 35 people a week, period. I'm not going to bed Sunday until I hit my 35 for the week. Imagine if you did that consistently through the end of the year. Now come January, you, got, you have stats that you can really predict and you're gonna have momentum on your side because all of those seeds, you would have peaked 200, almost 280 people, fourth quarter? You don't think some of those seeds are gonna harvest first quarter? That's it. I don't got nothing, yep, that's it. I'm a, mm-hmm. <laughs> Christina? Okay, so I have a question. Um, So I am I only got two under me right now. Mm -hmm. and um that are complete with both um you know planet and um and tele travel so my i i want to know like am i crazy for trying to aim for seven more before the end of this year to make a goal to oh. reach nine people by the end of this year am i putting a limit on myself is that too much of a burden to myself because i mean like i have kind of like finally found my place in this business and I'm more confident now. And as you know, as I shared with you, I finally, you know, built my peak interest card. And so um, I'm, I'm aiming that goal to get seven more people on me so I can have that residual income basic come in and gain that profit that I'm, that I'm, that I deserve. That's a great goal. And you got to push yourself. Mr. Bradley says the problem isn't that people set goals is that they set them too low. And I agree. To hit goal by the end of the year is a great goal for you, Christina. And so now you just got to increase your activity. You got to do weekly PBRs, whether you do them in person or Zoom, because you got you want to expose as many people as you can as fast as you can. So 
So the best way to do that is to do a PBR. And it could be a plug and play. And that's why I said on your monthly week at a um, month at a glance, you should have at least four PBRs a month, minimum. Whether you're inviting people to your home and exposing them that way, or you're going to a business partner's home and doing a PBR in their living room, or you're getting on a Zoom and you're inviting people to the Zoom to be exposed to the business. The other but thing, I, I, go ahead. I have a question. Do I, do when I do those things, because I mean, like, I kind of like, I think I got a little bit messed up. Do I need my director to be beside me to do those meetings with other people? Because Yep. I mean, that's where it's kind of a problem to, you know, you know, schedule my schedule with them. Can I, am I, since I've been in this business since March, can I do this on my own? Absolutely. If you're confident and you know how to answer the questions, because really you, you just need someone who's seasoned um, and documented that can answer the questions. If you've been doing three-way calls, you know how to answer the questions. If you've been having your upline director or senior business partner do a ton of three-way calls for you, you already know how to answer the questions. And so once the person joins, you still want that third-party valid third party validation. Once they join, if they join just on the strength of you showing them the plan and you answering the question, the third party validation is gonna come when you do that welcome call with your senior business partner. But absolutely, we love when people can answer these questions because now you're not waiting on us for you to have your PBR. Now, if you're brand, brand new and you can't answer the question, you still don't need your upline director to be on the presentation with you, but you can have them come in at the end to close it out. Which is going to take 10 minutes of our time to jump on at the end of your PBR to see if any, you know, share our story and to see if anybody has questions. That's it. And it doesn't have to be a director. It could be a goal builder. Everyone that's a goal builder should be able to close out a PBR. So on your month at a glance, in addition to tracking your numbers, you should have on there at least four PBRs a month, minimum. And like I said, that could be an in-person in your living room, in somebody else's living room, or it could be a webinar presentation that you're doing. You also want to have on your goals, like I said, minimum 35 people a week how you break that down a day is your business i'm telling you what the weekly goal should be minimum 35 everybody should be able to peak five people a day and it doesn't have to be five people a day because let's say your mondays at your job is just crazy and you are just burnt out by the time you get home then maybe you peak in 10 people on tuesday or maybe you're that weekend warrior and you're like, I got 48 hours to get my 35 in. I'm going to do, you know, 10 in the morning, 10 at night. 10, you understand what I'm saying? However you break up your daily is going to be based on your schedule. That's going to look different for everyone else, for each person. Some of you have kids, some of you don't. Some of you are married, some of you are not. Some of you work from home, some of you commute. It's going to look different for everyone. You create your DMO. But I'm saying the weekly goal, even someone with the most hectic schedule can peak 35 people a week. The other thing that should be on your month at a glance, your weekly meeting. Yep, if you got a weekly meeting that's within two hour driving distance, you should be there. Attending your weekly meeting is where you grow. It's where you learn how to present. You're getting additional training. You're hearing the testimonies that you get to leverage when you're speaking to different people. And sometimes you need the meeting and sometimes the meeting needs you. We need you to stand up there as a silver builder and show people that it could be done. We need to hear you know, that 
you know, you're a single mom and you were able to hit Gold Builder. We need to hear that your background is in education or that you're retired military or that you're retired, period. We need to, the guests need to hear that. You should be supporting your weekly meetings. You realize we as the directors, we don't get paid to do a weekly meeting in your community. We're paying for that out of our pocket for that hotel space. And when you don't come in to support with your $10 to help offset that cost, it could become a problem. And this is why we've had meetings start. Hold on. Skylar, come. Hold on, y'all. This is why oftentimes you will see a meeting start in a market and then it goes away. Because the business partners are not supporting it. How many months are you expecting the director to pay out their pocket and not recoup that money? How many months are you expecting a director to pay for a hotel out of their pocket and not recoup any of that money? And now you lose, we all lose when that happens. You know why? Because what if, let's say for example, the market is Minnesota. So now you have a director, you know, they get the hotel, but now the people in Minnesota, the business partners, they're not supporting the meeting. So they're not coming to pay their $10 or $15 every month. How many months do you expect that director to keep paying for that? Because you're not showing up and then now, what if you start to have um, prospects in that market? You have nothing to invite them to except a webinar. When we know the best way to expose someone is face-to-face. -face. Man, when guests come to a weekly meeting, it blows their mind. You can almost guarantee they're going to sign up. The closure rate is super, super high, more so than if they attend a webinar. But if we're not supporting those meetings, like I said, it's just a matter of time. How long do you think they're going to still happen? Right? The weekly meetings are amazing. Orlando, our meeting is every Monday. I'm there. Tampa, every second and fourth Thursday. I'm there too. I'm driving an hour, over an hour to each of those locations and I'm paying, not just for me, but for my husband. So it's like, if, if I can do that as a leader, why can't you show up to your weekly meeting that might be happening twice a month or once a month? Some of you live right in your city and you're not going. It's unacceptable, but yet you say you want to make money in this business. Good luck. We need everybody to support the meetings in the markets. Because guess what? When you show up, that's going to help get us to 100,000. It does. Imagine going to your weekly meeting. The room is packed and you <laughs> posting it on social media. I love when Mr. Moore posts the picture of the Atlanta meeting and I get to post it, showing two and 300 people on a Tuesday night in Atlanta. You know how powerful that is on social media for your followers to see that on a Tuesday night, people are showing up to get the information about Planet Marketing. Imagine if all of our weekly meetings were packed like that. Oh my gosh, we would have been hit. We'd be working on 200,000. So I need everybody to make that a priority. 
if there's a super Saturday, super Saturday, whatever it is in your market, you need to make it a priority. And for those of you that are still working and your job has shift bids, you need to set it up so that you're able to attend if your job is the problem. You got to make it a priority. All right? So the other thing that should be on your week at a month at a glance is so in addition to the the weekly meetings the team zooms business launches for your team all of that should be tracked convention blackout never miss an event you're qualified to attend any questions about anything. Was this helpful for everybody today? I know we talked about a lot of different things. Rochelle, did you have a question? Are you just I don't think it was helpful because it's funny because I have the um my vision for 2023 is right above me and I'm looking at it. Um and my goal was to go hit next level next month. So I have to just be more consistent when it comes to prospecting because all my prospecting I do is online and then out and about so I just have to kind of work on that 35 a week I know I haven't hit 35 a week but I need to well this was good 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 you have your running list remember it's a running list so you should constantly be adding people to your list as you're out and about and meeting people add them to your list you go to a, a vendor event Grab everybody's business cards and add them to your list. If you do a business post on social media and people are liking and commenting, everybody who likes and comment, you add them to the list. It's a running list. And if you're not coming up with people to add to your list, months and months are going by and you haven't added anybody to your list, that means you're not out and about, you're not engaging, you're not, you're not doing enough activity, you're not putting yourself out there. Remember, you are your business. It's you. So you gotta market yourself, online and offline. You gotta attract people, show them the lifestyle. People want, and remember the first slide of our presentation, time freedom, personal freedom, financial freedom. This is how you design your ideal life. You have to have those three freedoms in order to design your ideal life. Don't we all want personal freedom, time freedom, and financial freedom, right? So start doing posts that talk about that. If you're out with your family, y'all go out to the beach or out to dinner or out together, take pictures of you and your family out. Hashtag time freedom, being able to spend more time with your loved ones. I typically go get my pedicure in the middle of the week, in the morning. And I always do a post, this is what time freedom looks like. Getting in the pedicure on a Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. when everybody else is at work. If you want this kind of freedom, click this link for more information. You traveling somewhere? Take pictures. Hashtag lifestyle of a travel business owner. Okay, any questions, comments, feedback? Who wants to share their takeaway from today's session? Miss Delta? There we go. <laughs> um, 
well, I, I guess I can start off by saying, ouch, <laughs> hit home on a lot of things. And I'm looking at, I was taking notes and it says weekly goal is 35 to, you know, a peak or prospect 35 people a week. And first I was thinking like, wow, but it's, it's doable and it's staying consistent and you got to hit the ground running. It's like, sometimes you hear, hear things and it's like, okay, kind of go over your head, but like a lot of everything that you were saying, I appreciate Yes, it was, it, I'm saying, ouch, but it helped me to, like I said, for me, I'm so used to my, well, I'm, I'm looking, do, using my phone, but my phone is like, it's this right here for my phone. And it's like, everything that's in my phone, I'm going to have to like manually transfer it over to the calendar. Cause you know, yes, I got my 24 calendar, but as far as I, I have not, you know, began to do anything with it, but now it's like, what I see on my phone transfer it over to the calendar and I have to get myself into the habit of, of you know, like having it like physically, like maybe when I go, you know, certain places I can have it. So oh, let me kind of put you down on my calendar because I'm so used to putting all my information into the phone. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I'm, it, that's just me. It's just like, you know, what we do. But like I said, I appreciate you in the teachings and the nuggets that you've dropped because it, it, it's going to help me to propel myself to the next level. And I, 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 I do. And like I said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're I, as long as you say who you are and do what you do and drop nuggets and, and rain down on us all this knowledge that, that, that you share, we will be better business, uh, be, better CEOs in moving our business forward. So I, Absolutely. I'm true. You're welcome. You're welcome. Remember, your cal your cell phone will keep you on track, but mm -hmm. your calendar will keep you productive. Lenise? So I um I appreciated um the point that I've always heard, but I didn't really understand it completely about not changing your goal date because um, you know, I would just, I knew that was the date I, I wanted to hit my next promotion. If I didn't hit, I just made a new date, but I can see, but I, so I never knew what to do with that part. Like, okay, I didn't change the date. Now what? So, um, I, I, I appreciate that because now it puts a different sense of urgency when you see, okay, I'm two days past my date. I'm three days past my date versus I got 30 more days to hit my, my goal. Right. So right. I really appreciated that. And then the other thing is actually tracking the numbers because um, I'm going to start putting that in my calendar, in my physical calendar um, every single day. So um, I appreciate those. those. And those are things that like I've heard before, but sometimes things hit different when you're in different parts of you know different space and so I appreciate the reminders oh you're very welcome you're very welcome another thing real quick to track on your calendar um and I highly recommend everybody does this at least once a month make a commitment to get a certification on the travel side of the business even if you're not planning to book travel for anybody you're not focusing on that make a commitment once a month to get certified in something because you need to be educated in the product that you're selling you need to be educated in the product that you're selling you need to be educated in the product that you're selling and get on one at least one webinar a month one one in teletravel they do a, a webinar every every week and i'm saying at least once a month get on a webinar so that you can learn about the products and services from the travel suppliers whoever they're featuring so one webinar a month minimum depending on what your goals are right but if your goal is is if if, if 80 percent of your time is i'm building my planet marketing business then I'm saying at least once a month, do an IntelliTravel webinar so you can learn about the suppliers. And once a month, get a certification. So now you're you're doing the 80-20, okay? Uh, Bethany? 
So I was literally driving <clears throat> on my lunch break when you were talking about the calendar. I went to get my lunch. I ate it over, over like, off camera. I'm in the park right now at Walmart. I'm going to go in there right now and get my 2024 calendar. <laughs> There's no reason why. I'm right here. I can't wait to get this, get this right now. So Good. thank you for that uh, reminder. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Shamika? So I'm like Delta. I'm going to start off by saying ouch. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> because I need to get to my uh, weekly meetings more. I actually just purchased the ticket for the next one that's coming up. Um, but I would say my biggest takeaway um, this time around is definitely schedule those four PBIs a month um, on your calendar. And so I'm definitely going to start doing that, even if it's I, I feel guilty sometimes because I know that I want to do it inside my home, but it's like, you got to work with what you got right now. So I'm going to do the Zoom for now, and then eventually it's going to come to my house. And one thing I did want to say, too, is um, to people um, that virtual coffee break is not just Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's just when Tanisha does it, and it's recorded. But we're on here Wednesday, Tuesday through Friday. So y'all hop on um, on virtual coffee break on those days, too. It's just not recorded, and it's not Tanisha. But um, we love to see y'all on there too. But that's that's all I got. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And and again, I highly recommend getting on those different days because it's so nice to hear from your other business partners. Like I learned from all of you. All of you helped me grow, right? As a leader. So you know, Shamika, Tamika, Michelle. You know, when they host Coffee Break, it's like a totally different vibe. And you need that. You need to hear from other people as well. And I'm always looking for people to step up and host because we still need, we need to get Mondays back, right? We don't have a virtual coffee break on Monday. So anybody who's willing to make the commitment, and I'll say we could start it in 2024, who would be willing to make a commitment, and it is a commitment, to host Monday's virtual coffee break? Right, and it could be something as simple as being on the IMV and then having a discussion on Monday about the IMV. Because there needs to be more discussions about the IMV. We need to take it from that 20 minute IMV and bring it to the table to really dive deep into it. So what does that mean? That means all of y'all gotta be committed to being on the IMV so you can participate in the conversation. Right? I'm not expecting y'all to do what I do. But having a conversation about the IMV for that day, everybody should be reading the books anyway. And that would be a great Monday virtual coffee break. Lakeisha? Good afternoon, Dr. Burke and everyone. Um, I'm like everybody else at this point. Just ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Um, definitely go back and see where I lost that consistency at by not using that calendar like I was when I was moving and letting distractions get in the way. Um, so I'm definitely going to get, I have a 2024, but it didn't have the 15 minute block, like, so that worked better for me at this point. So I'll just go ahead and get a new one. And like Shamika just said, with the, with the, using excuses for PBRs because I'm definitely not at for me personally at a point for having people at my home but I was using it as an excuse not to have them consistently when I can be doing these online and other ways so exactly. Out, out, out. exactly thank you and here's the other thing if your home is not set up for whatever reason we don't even need to discuss it to do a PBR then team up with a business partner whose home is set up to do a PBR. Yeah. Everybody here with 97,000 people in the business, you cannot tell me that there is not somebody within 30 minutes of where you live who is not in this, who, who's not in the business. Everybody got a business partner within 30 minutes of them. Mm -hmm. Is that safe to say? I think that's a pretty good assumption. We can assume everybody has a planet marketing business partner within 30 minutes of where they live unless you live under a rock in the middle of alaska come on 
Get together with your cross-line business partners. They don't even have to be on our team. And here's the thing. If you went to your weekly meeting, you'd find those people who live close to you that you could team up with. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! <laughs> right? So let's remove all the excuses so that we can execute. All right, all right. We're 10 minutes over time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to seeing y'all again next Tuesday. Don't forget tonight at 10 p.m. is our team Zoom with Mr. Moore. So make sure you are on and your team is on. Everybody have a great day. Love y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.